The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, and finally, two things optimism in the wheat crop. I can't believe it. The number of growers who have said to me, gee, Pete, the wheat looks better this spring than it did last fall. Awesome, you're not killing it for the 10th time. We got optimism in the wheat crop. But the other big question is, is it good enough to keep? Because man, it looked tough last fall and lots of questions coming in. How do we assess wheat? What are the differences in 2022? So those are great questions. To assess the wheat crop, first off, we have two different wheat crops. You can see it here. This is a field the grower got rained out October the 2nd, didn't get back until I think November the 12th. Look at the difference in the wheat crop. Now the November the 12th wheat, I can't tell you how many growers who filled in between tile runs or whatever, that wheat's there. It actually, we're gonna have a crop. I think it's okay. Now it's not okay everywhere. I get on the heavy Lambton clays down in the Niagara Peninsula. I think that's a different story, but I think we've got a chance on the late planted wheat. So on the early planted wheat, well, that's no question, except where the water laid and where the water laid, man, that wheat is dead. And sometimes that can be a big portion of the field. So assessing wheat, we've done lots on that. We'll, we've got videos on that. We're gonna link it here, but the one difference is get up with a drone, get a satellite shot, I don't care. You can get really cheap satellite information or you can go have some fun flying a drone. However, on this wheat, it's too early. It's simply too small, so you can't make a decision on this wheat from an aerial standpoint for at least two or three weeks. We gotta get some green. We're not there with green yet. On this wheat, we're all good. Get the drone up there. You can get a much better sense of what percentage is good and what is bad. By the way, if you have drowned out spots and you're keeping that wheat, and you probably should because that is amazing wheat, make sure you spread something in there. I don't care if it's oats, it's red clover, spread something to act for weed control. Okay, so that's the assessing wheat part and you're all saying, well, yeah, we've heard that before. The other big difference in 2022, look at the price. Normally, wheat is 10% premium to corn. Right now, corn is at $8. Wheat is at $12, and that's 50%. Wheat finally is king. Wheat finally is worth what it should be worth, 50% more than that useless corn. But if you have wheat forward contracted, that really changes the game. And you can't afford to go out on this wheat and put on 50 pounds of nitrogen because if this wheat is no good, we may not go to corn. We're so short on nitrogen supplies, as much as I hate to go back to soybeans, we might have to. So I can't stimulate this wheat. If I decide to take it out and I've forward contracted, and lots of us have, 50 bushels of wheat at $7 a bushel or $8 a bushel, it's currently at 12. You do 50 times four, that's $200 per acre more that that soybean crop, if you go back into soybeans, is going to have to make you to cover the difference in the price. So you have to talk to your elevator. You have to look at what you have forward contracted. This economics, because wheat is crazy priced, comes into the fore much more than it used to. Last point. People continually ask me, straw, 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 the straw market is so great. Yeah, I can't believe it. I'm hearing rumors that the ginseng growers who desperately need straw that's not sprayed with glyphosate, so they pay a premium. There are rumors that they are paying 12 cents a pound in the swath. Now, I am not saying that's what straw is going to go for in your area. It's a very localized thing. I'm not setting the price, but from a nutrient value, even at today's extremely high fertilizer values, there's no way there is more than three cents a pound 
in the straw. So if that helps in terms of making the economics work to keep that wheat crop, then do it. Sell the straw, keep the wheat. Last note, nitrogen's now a buck 30 a bushel. If we can get red clover established in the wheat and get a 75 pound credit, you do the math on that, we're $100 an acre in nitrogen to next year's corn crop. And immediately a whole bunch of guys like Peter Johnson are saying, I never get the clover to establish in my wheat crop. I think we have to start looking at seeding the red clover or crimson clover or some clover species after the wheat comes off if we don't get a good stand in the wheat crop as the season gets longer, as we get more days and our wheat seems to be coming off earlier and earlier, summer seeding that red clover to make that nitrogen starts to make sense. So a whole lot of different things to think about this year. You don't forget to do tiller counts. We've got videos on that as well, but whatever you do, get the satellite up there or get the drone up there, look at your wheat crop, make the assessment, count in the economics and grow great wheat.